Hello, today we're going to start chapter 13 on periodic function and trigonometry. So um, this first, first section is really introductory, just talking about what it means to be periodic and how you can determine if a cycle is periodic or not. So we're going to be answering the question, what does it mean to be periodic? We're going to identify cycles and periods of periodic functions and find the amplitude of a periodic function. So let's start with some vocab. A periodic function is a function that repeats a pattern of y values or outputs at regular intervals. So this is going to be um, like if you think of a, a wave, that constant um, going up, going down, coming in at the same place. If we disregarded the tides, waves would always look the same. Those would be periodic functions. Uh, one complete pattern is a cycle. That's supposed to be one, not on. One complete pattern is a cycle, so from beginning of one to the beginning of the next, or high point to high point, low point to low point, x value to x value, however you want to look at it. The period of a function is the horizontal length, or the distance along the x-axis, of one cycle. So we're looking at horizontally, from one side to the other side. The midline is a line halfway between the maximum and the minimum values. So those are looking at your outputs, your y values. The midline is halfway between the highest high and the lowest low. And the amplitude is half the difference between the maximum and minimum values of the function. So we're going to take half of the maximum minus the minimum. So whatever our, min our maximum amplitude is, subtract our minimum amplitude, and then we're going to cut that in half, and that will give, give us our amplitude. All right, so identifying cycles and periods. So analyze the periodic function below. Identify the cycle in two different ways. And what is the period of the function? So here we have this one that's kind of this, like, um, I don't know, maybe it looks like a mountain. So um, if you see on here, they talk about a period um, and a cycle. And they look at it from two different perspectives. So in this first example, they said one cycle was from high down to low back to high again. Or you could say from x value to corresponding x value, so up, down, up. Either way, that's one cycle. And then um, a cycle is also a period, so however long this is. Um, so let's see, this is a value of 2, this is a value of 6. So a cycle of 4, um, this is 8, and this is 12, so that's also 4. So you can see that it covers 4x values for the cycle. Um, analyze each periodic function, identify the cycle in two different ways, and what's the period of the function. So I want you to go ahead and just take a look at these two. Pause the video really quick. Identify two ways, or two different ways that you can look at the cycle and the period. So how um, the period is the value, your x value. The cycle is just like high to high, low to low. Okay, so I want you to write those two down and you're going to compare them with your partner. Alright, is the function periodic? If it is, what is its period? So let's look at this first one. So we have this kind of um, snake looking pattern. Um, it does have a pattern to it and we can see that it's an obvious pattern. But is it periodic? Can we um, take a section, say from high to high? Are those the same? No, they're not. So this isn't periodic even though it is in a pattern. What about this one? Is this one periodic? Well, yes it is. Um, so let's compare x value to corresponding x value. So I'm going to look at this one here and this one here. So it is uh, periodic because it repeats the same pattern, has the same highs, has the same lows, has that same little dip right there. Those are all consistent. And then what is the period? So this goes from, looks like a value of 2 to a value of 12. So our period is 10. Ten units to be specific. Oh, in the book they went from high to high. 
So from 0, 4 to 10, 4, that's still 10 units. Okay, what about these? Are these functions periodic? What are their periods, if they are? All right, what is the amplitude of the periodic function below, and what is the equation of the midline? So here I have this one. I show my maximum and my minimum. So you remember um, from our vocabulary, the midline is halfway between the maximum value and the minimum value. So my maximum value is 4. My minimum value is negative 1. So if we look at halfway between those two, what are we going to be at? Okay, so correction, that's a negative 2 there. That was my fault. Oops. Forgot to turn on the pencil. Okay, so that's a negative 2. So from negative 2 to 4, halfway between those two is going to be right here at 1. So our midline is 1. Now, to find our amplitude, remember amplitude, we had that nice formula, 1 half of the maximum value minus the minimum value. Uh, this is talking about y values. So our highest y value is 4 minus our lowest is negative 2. So add those two together. So you get 1 half of 4 plus 2 is 6. So your amplitude is 3. Um, also, if you are having a hard time um, or if the numbers are bigger, that you can't really um, distinguish what your midline is. There is a formula for the midline. To find a midline, it's one half of your maximum plus your minimum. So this one is midline, and this one is amplitude. So amplitude, you subtract, midline, you add. That's handy. At least it's the same formula, less stuff to remember. Just have to distinguish. Okay, what's the amplitude and periodic function below, and what's the equation of the midline? So I want you to go ahead and figure out these ones. Um, you can discuss them with your partner. Oh, and look, we're done. Okay, so you have those um, three sets of check these or do them on your own, or you can do it that you need to do with your partner. Um, and then you can work on your homework, and I hope you have a great day.